Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Genesis Community Livecast. This is our Genesis Shapers recap episode for the November 2020 Shapers meeting, Collecting Collections. I'm David Vogelpohl. I've been a proud member of the Genesis community for over eight years now. I lead Genesis at WP Engine, and I love helping the Genesis community get better together with my friends from the Shapers. Joining me for today's recap episode, uh, first time appearance on a Shapers recap episode, I'd like to welcome Lauren Gage of Restored 316. Lauren, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. So glad to have you here. Uh, for those unfamiliar, maybe maybe those like living under a rock and not familiar <laughs> with all the things you do in Genesis, um, could you tell folks a little bit about what Restored does? Yeah, so we are primarily focused on feminine WordPress themes uh, built with the Genesis framework, of course. Um, and then we offer some other things like graphic templates and stuff. Our, our slogan, our main goal in our business is making businesses beautiful and just helping you know women in business succeed. Oh, that's a great slogan. I don't think I'd heard that before. Yeah. Seeing your themes, I would definitely say it fits. Um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. I'd like to welcome back Carrie Dills of CarrieDills.com. Carrie, welcome. Thanks again for having me. Of course, always glad to have you here. And for those watching or listening, uh, Carrie and Lauren are both Genesis Shapers, so glad to have them here to come and recap the meeting. So uh, to orient everyone, of course, the meeting takes place in Slack every month. The very first question we always ask is, can we get a show of hands for those that were able to make it today? Uh, Carrie and Lauren, you were both there. Uh, we also have John Paris, Nick Chernis from the Genesis engineering team, Jonathan Jeter, a Shaper, works for a company called Click Here Labs, big agency out of Dallas, Matt Lawrence from the engineering team, Mike Hemberger from My Themes, Rimkus DeFrias, uh, and Rimkus just says so much. He's such a great guy. Uh, you, do you know Rimkus, Lauren? I know, I know, Carrie, I think you know him well. I don't know him very well. I've just seen his name in the Shapers group, yeah. He's just this great, like, strong teddy bear kind of guy. He's, he's okay. a wonderful, wonderful individual. Love having him on the Shapers. Uh, John Brown, Nawai Baidola. Um, Nawai was on the Genesis Shapers recap episode last month. Ryan Murray of 3200 Creative, Lyon Kinstra from the engineering team, Bill Erickson of Bill Erickson fame, uh, Travis Smith as well. So it looks like we had a good group that day. Our first question on the agenda was, what improvements to, uh, to non-technical user experiences would you like to see us address within Genesis products? Um, how can we make non-technical users' lives easier? Um, this question actually spawned uh, from a conversation with Lauren Gage right here yeah. <laughs> uh, that she and I had had uh, around this on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And so Lauren, uh, maybe you could share your thoughts here and then we can kind of get to some of the thoughts from the other shapers. Yeah, so I, I think I commented there in that meeting that I think my biggest thing regarding this is avoiding as much technical stuff for the end user as possible, especially when it involves updating a child theme that in my opinion, wasn't really meant to be updated in the first place when the existence of child themes were created. So I think that part of things is really what I think needs to be uh, looked at when a big update is, is made. Yeah, those are really good points. You know, I know a lot of people do make modifications to their theme or, um, you know, have to update themes for a variety of reasons. Um, I know the block styles in particular affected uh, some of your customers and, and updating them with the Genesis blocks, atomic blocks, the Genesis blocks migration right. stuff. Um, and so it's interesting, you know, this, this issue, if you will, of like, well, we need to make updates to themes over time. And, and people need to do that for all kinds of reasons, security sure. patches and so on and so forth. And so like getting around this paradigm of, well, how do I customize? How do I add styles? And how do I do that in a way where I can, you know, maybe do updates or, or at least avoid them right. by doing those changes in other ways? I feel like full site editing and the way kind of themes and blocks will be, uh, plugins will behave and where content will live and where styles will live will actually alleviate a lot of this. Right. Um, but obviously, um, these paradigms still exist in a lot of contexts. Uh, Carrie, what was your opinion? What, what should we do to improve non-technical user experiences within the Genesis uh, suite of products? Uh, well, I really appreciated Lauren's insight because the audience that she works with and also Anita chimed in with some, um, some comments and working. I know she does a lot of work with less technical users. Um, 
Anita brought up a good point, which is making users feel safe and okay about updating plugins. And when plugins haven't had an update in, you know, or been tested with the latest version of WordPress, even though they're non-breaking plugins that still might scare users off. Um, I'm personally guilty of harboring some uh, outdated plugins in the in the repository. Um, so are they, are they just not updated, or tested with the current version, but you're saying they're functionally stable? They functionally really work. You just yes. haven't like bumped the version or, or the testing uh, attribute within the plugin. To, exactly. to show on .org that it was tested. Exactly. But when I, I after Anita's comment, I went and looked and it's been four years <laughs> <laughs> since I updated a plugin. I was like, oh, maybe it's time I go ahead and give that a version bump. Yeah, I think she was pointing out some of the plugins in the Genesis universe are like that. Like they work, but if you look on .org, it says hasn't been tested with the latest version and it, it, it makes people feel fearful about doing that update. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, that's a really good point. You know, plugin up to, uh, plugins that are not patched for security vulnerabilities are like the biggest cause of WordPress sites getting hacked. And I have a well, I have an unnamed family member who will remain unnamed who I helped update their their laptop recently, and I think they were like on five versions back of Mac OS. It was just like Thanks. rife with unpatched vulnerabilities, and I'm like, oh my goodness, we got to get this up to date. Uh, of course, people do this with their plugins as well. I think it's also important to point out, or I think it's good that Anita pointed this out. And I didn't mention Anita showing up, but she was late, apparently. She, she came in later and said, I'm here. Uh, <laughs> but really pointing out that it's also part of the plugin author's responsibility to, to instill that confidence and provide people you know, assurances as they make those upgrades, um, that those upgrades are going to work in a way that's hopefully not going to cause issues with their site. I think testing updates is always, of course, important no matter what. Um, so, um, but it's good to have those assur assurances as you go on with that. Um, Remkus actually pointed out, he says, I suppose this goes for non-technical users as well, but I'd love to see more onboarding happening, explaining the features of Genesis and its child theme offers. I'm finding uh, ha myself having to explain these quite frequently. So to me, it was like talking about things like one-click theme setup. Um, and as we think even in the future with full site editing, like what that experience might look like, which is great for like onboarding, but like if you look at the experiences even within one click theme setup within the studio press themes or even third party themes, there's not a lot of explanation for like what the things are and exactly, you know, what the context is and using them. And I thought it was very ironic that Remkus brought this up because Remkus formerly worked for Yoast, which I think Yoast does an incredible job with their help text. Um, if you read help text on a, on a Yoast feature, like it's telling you what it is and what the context is. It links off to something else if you want to go read the details. Um, Lauren, ha have you approached this much in your themes? Like, do you, do, you, do you pay a lot of attention to your help text or like helping those, those users get to that next step and find value faster? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's like one of the key things I think in our business is everything that I launch. I do video tutorials of every single step so that they understand like what everything is doing and you know what to click. I mean, I'm dealing with a lot of non-technical bloggers, right? So I've got to literally hold their hand and step them through the entire process. So I have lots of videos and written text to, to help them through that process. Well, that's awesome. And I know a lot of people in the Genesis and WordPress context in general will start as you described and like find a knack for it and keep doing it and maybe even get into development one day. Mm -hmm. But during that phase of discovery, you know, in addition to providing technology that makes it easy, it sounds like it's a good point by Remkus that you also need the context to, uh, in terms of like help text and, and other ways to explain how and why things work. Yep, absolutely. All right, next question on the agenda. Do you have any feedback or suggestions for collections in Genesis blocks? Um, questions and or thoughts on the use of collections by child themes in the FSC context or otherwise. So let me break this down into something that's more uh, approachable and understandable. Genesis Blocks released a feature recently called Collections. The way you can think about collections is it's basically a themes block-based demo content that's available to use at any moment when building a poster page and in the future, navigation, sidebar, and footer. Uh, collections are able to be created by anyone and invoked, if you will, within Genesis blocks. 
So if you were a third party theme provider, by sake of example, like Lauren, um, as full site editing and these other aspects come to be, you can actually create a collection and have it be uh, triggered within the Genesis Blocks plugin as a user is building a post or page. Collections are basically, again, a demo, uh, demo uh, site, uh, sites worth of demo content that's all been chopped up in the entire pages, sections of pages, and in individual blocks. So instead of using only one click theme setup to load in all that stuff when you create a site, it's actually like on demand, basically. Um, Lauren, I was most curious, I, I'm curious about people's feedback in general, but I was kind of most curious from the third party theme providers perspective, had some really good conversations with John Brown around this, thinking about how he thinks about demo content and like, you know, his thoughts on collections. But I'm just curious, like what your thoughts were kind of seeing that and thinking about like future iterations of block-based demo content with your themes. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited about it because one of our top questions with our customers that are using Gutenberg themes is I want this section from this page and how do I get it on this page? Like people are having to go and copy and, code, copy and paste code and all this kind of stuff right now, which is a mess. But so I'm excited about it. I have not had the time yet to sit down and like play with it, but I've seen the videos. I understand how it works. So I'm excited to dive in and um, eventually include that in my themes as it, as it progresses. Awesome. Well, we're doing video here. What if we just show people what I'm talking about so I can quit <laughs> describing this visual thing? Let's do hoping, it. Hoping everyone does it. We'll see if it works here. Okay. Share screen. All right. Good deal. All right. I'm inside WordPress. So I'm inside a post or a page or whatever. So let's go take a look at what a collection is. So I'm going to go to layouts, which is triggered by the Genesis Blocks plugin. As I described, there are parts of a page called sections which are block-based demo content, layouts, which are an entire page of block-based demo content. But as you can see here, the layouts don't really follow the same design pattern. You can actually go in and modify these to all follow the same design pattern. Uh, but in their default state within Genesis blocks, they don't within the layouts. However, within collections, you'll notice that they all follow the same design pattern. So these are the collection sections, part of a page, and as you can see, same design. I get all the way down here and we have page layout. So an entire page of block-based demo content. So if you've run one-click theme setup, you may know it like loads in all the block-based demo content like in one go. Um, and so with the collections approach, you actually just click on this uh, icon here or whatever, when you're building a page or a post and it just loads in all the content automatically on demand. And I think that's the key difference with collections over say one click theme setup. So that's what a collection is. Carrie, what about you? You've been a WordPress, I'm sorry, WordPress and Genesis forever. Um, what are your thoughts on collections and, and just, I guess, full site editing and this whole block thing in general? <laughs> well, that's a loaded question. Uh, <laughs> as far as the collections go, I think that's really cool. Um, in the early days, <clears throat> excuse me, Genesis and Lauren, you've probably heard this too, or you were just even mentioning it that, <clears throat> hold on. Yeah, take, take your time there. We want to get, we want to get the good Carrie Dills non-coughing opinion. <laughs> yes. You like the bridge that. there I covered for you? You did. I appreciate yeah. that. Sorry for the, the frog joining us this morning. Uh, but people enjoying say like thinking one theme has a super cool homepage um, or a, a section or whatnot, like our the minimum pro theme had these really like huge social icons on the front and people would be like, how do I get that on this other theme? And uh, so the idea of just being able to take design patterns and um, really easily pop them into any theme. I love it. I mean, even when the Gutenberg themes started rolling out, uh, like I really liked the authority pro homepage but I wanted to use a different theme. So the way I went about it was do a one-click setup uh, on Authority Pro, get all the blocks in and then switch themes, um, which is doable, but there's just a lot of extra clicks. So I think collections solves an interesting um, problem. And I like that that's something that third-party uh, developers can take advantage of. That's really cool analogy. I actually had not thought about it in that way, but that's absolutely correct, right? It's like mixing and matching um, between the theme-based demo content, which was, you know, relatively difficult before. 
um, that, that's a really interesting outcome from that. I think the other issue that brings up though is Frankensites, right? I'm, I'm mixing and matching <laughs> and I've got all these styles over here. And I know that's on a lot of folks' minds, um, but you know, obviously having that flexibility and still the flexibility, of course, the style within um, your, you know, your vision of design. So if you like those blue buttons, sure, use the blue buttons and so on and so forth. Uh, but certainly getting to that point of customization is way faster um, by being able to mix and match demo content in the block context. All right, next question for the shapers. We will be building and shaping PHP CSS templates for specific types of custom blocks for Genesis custom blocks as examples for people to build and modify their own. What type of blocks would you like to see us build and share? So I'll do the context thing again. Genesis Custom Blocks helps you create your own custom Gutenberg block. In order to do that, you create a PHP and a CSS file. So you need to be a WordPress developer to use it. However, you don't need to know React. So that's great for your bread and butter WordPress developer. And so what Rob Stinson of the uh, Genesis product marketing team is doing is he's actually going out and building a lot of blocks and then he's sharing the templates with folks. And you can actually check this out if you go to the Genesis custom blocks channel in Slack, Rob's starting to share those in there. And he's like, well, what, what, which ones do you want to build? Uh, Carrie, I guess I'll pick on you. Did you, have a, did you have one that you thought we should build or he should build or did you... Uh, just like something that someone else had suggested? Uh, well, I posed a similar question to this on a, uh, the Genesis Facebook page a few weeks ago. and Because well, you're doing this too, aren't you? Yeah, trying to. Yeah, yeah. yeah give people, and I mean, in a way that's collaborative with, with Rob, certainly uh, he's the master when it comes to. Well, that. I assume with your courses and stuff, like this kind of stuff would probably wake its way in over time. So uh, feel free to work on your own, Carrie. <laughs> don't, don't feel free to collaborate. Rob's great, but don't feel, don't feel <laughs> obligated to collaborate with Rob. Oh, all right, Rob, did you hear that? <laughs> um, no, I think the overwhelming response was grids. We want to see grid layouts for posts. And then, uh, you know, with the current Genesis framework operating heavily with hooks and filters, there's this tremendous flexibility to uh, put the photo on the top or to remove the comments or post author or to get really granular in the settings. Um, and right now the, like the grid, what exists right now with full site editing is still very immature. There's the, the new terribly named query block that, uh, that recently shipped. And anyway, all that to say that people are overwhelmingly looking for a variety of grid types and the flexibility. Um, and since that's not there in core yet, using Genesis custom blocks um, as a way to build some examples that Rob is doing this. Yeah, he said it was, it was gonna be like all queries for the next set of things, like different examples. Um, you know, the, the one of the more popular block requests in the Genesis blocks <clears throat> context where blocks are kind of pre-designed and created and optimized versus you creating whatever kind of thing you want in Genesis custom blocks was like um, basically a post grid for custom post types that you could filter by whatever the custom post type and whatever the, the custom metadata was. Um, and so it wasn't a surprise to see this as a popular uh, Requests from the shapers. I mean, Nawai mentioned it. Lauren, you you gave it a thumbs up there. Is this this on your mind? Oh, for sure. I couldn't have said it any better than Carrie just did. It's definitely my number one thing of wanting more more block styles for those post grids. Yep. Remka says plus one thousand for fancy grids and variation. Um, Looks like Ryan Murray's emphasizing mobile first design, which of course always great, especially in today's world. And then John Brown echoed it. I mean, it's so funny. I, we were, we were hoping for a list of ideas, but we basically just got like the one idea. It was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course the one idea is like a flexible idea that you can kind of use with anything. So maybe that's why um, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so Rob's building those. Um, if you listening or watching would like to request your own examples of custom blocks, um, please go to the Genesis custom block Slack channel and make that suggestion in there. Rob Stinson will be monitoring that and looking for ideas for his next template to share. Next question for the shapers. Did you notice any specific 
are any issues specific to sites running Genesis themes related to the atomic blocks to Genesis blocks migration tool. So for context, um, we released a migration tech with inside Genesis blocks and atomic blocks that automatically migrated um, your blocks over to Genesis blocks. And then the next part of this question says, if you're a third-party theme provider or provider or provide support to non-technical users, um, did those users have issues migrating from atomic blocks to Genesis blocks? Um, Lauren, I know that some of your users did, um, and it was related to some of the styles that were provided for atomic blocks um, in the child theme, kind of forcing that, that theme, uh, to, those folks to kind of upgrade their child theme. I think one I'd like to enforce real quickly uh, there is no rush to do this migration. If you were in the situation where you have styles within your theme for blocks and uh, doing the migration will require a few extra steps, which we um, do have documentation around, um, there's no rush to do that. Don't feel like you need to run out and do this tomorrow. Atomic blocks will absolutely be maintained for maintenance releases and for you know, major breaking changes as WordPress evolves, we're definitely not gonna leave folks hanging that are still using atomic blocks. Um, so I just like to reinforce that in general. Um, and then, you know, obviously thank you, Lauren, for, um, you know, the work you've done to get your customers in a spot that have been using that plugin and did have to upgrade those themes. I think the conversations that you and I had uh, around helping to make this go smoother, particularly for third-party theme authors in the future was incredibly helpful. Um, now, I will, uh, emphasize we don't plan any major migration plugins anytime soon. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, just really appreciate everyone. You know, if we made the decision uh, last year to elevate the Genesis brand from only the Genesis framework um, to all of our, you know, Genesis, uh, you know, kind of powered, if you will, uh, products. And so, uh, in elevating that brand, um, you know, we wanted to move away from the Atomic Blocks brand um, and then settle within the Genesis Blocks, you know, especially as we build for the future and full site editing. Um, in the full site editing context, when you build full site editing themes, Genesis Blocks will essentially be that kind of core Genesis technology in that context. So as you're using the framework today to build non full site editing themes as all web developers and theme developers are doing today, this isn't specific to Genesis, uh, but for FSE, because of the changes happening to themes and what PHP functions they can use and things like that, Genesis blocks will be that core in FSE. Um, now, why seem to have a, a fine time with it? Um, he says, as I mentioned, uh, from the 15 to 20 migrations I did, uh, not have a single issue. Um, I think he didn't have a lot of styles in his themes. So that was one reason. Most people actually had that kind of experience. Um, but he also is very technical, so I'm sure that was helpful for him. Um, so it's good feedback there. Lauren, anything you'd like to add? Nope. I think I mentioned in the shapers I had one issue with the MailChimp API when that migration went through, but we were able to get it fixed and it was good. But overall, we had a very seamless you know, process of getting everybody upgraded or migrated over. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I know y'all y'all do great work there, making sure your customers are set up for success. I, I think I I feel very blessed to work in an industry where um, we can have this kind of collaboration between companies and between individuals to help make sure folks are set up for success. So, thank you for all the work you do there with you with your with your folks, uh, Lauren. Really appreciate that. And I think this is the last question. Uh, it says, would you like to participate in the beta for Genesis block theme? Um, Lauren, I don't know, I don't, I don't see your name right here. Did you say you would or no? I didn't, I, I think at that point I had to get on another call with a client, but um, yes, I would like to. I just need to find the time to do it. <laughs> yeah, I know time is a is tricky business for sure. If only there were more hours in a day. <laughs> yes, yes. Karen, I know you've been testing. It looks like other folks said, um, you know, they were they were willing to. We had asked this question before the launch of the Genesis Block theme beta. Um, that was launched in early November. If you go to studiopress.blog, you can see a blog post about it. There's also a Slack channel in Genesis WP uh, called Genesis Block theme beta. And the theme is a non-full site editing theme 
and the blog post describes how you should approach testing with it, but it's primarily focused on doing what we call a block only or block first build. You're really not modifying the theme hardly at all, if, if at all. And the reason for that is because when we look at full site editing, the way we use themes today and the way themes function will be greatly different. In other words, you'll be providing styles more um, in the plugin context in some ways than the theme and the theme will, will govern more in, in the block context is what I mean. Um, and the theme will govern, will be more to define the global styles, of course, as themes do today, uh, but this paradigm is changing. And so what we wanted to do was we wanted to release a theme that people could test in conjunction with Genesis blocks or Genesis custom blocks to try to do one of those kind of block first builds and then provide feedback on that experience. What the product and engineering teams are doing is they are using that feedback to inform what, they're, what they will build in terms of Genesis block theme uh, as an FSE theme, full site editing theme. So in other words, the beta theme will be wound down after the beta period and will be replaced with a full site editing theme. You can think of Genesis block theme as Genesis sample for full site editing. It will be freely distributed to anyone. And then third party theme providers like Lauren, or if you make your own custom themes for full site editing, uh, will be able to build your own theme similar to Genesis block theme. So we definitely, definitely uh, need your feedback. We need to understand what your experience is like building with blocks, what roadblocks you've hit, so that as we work to release the full site editing version of Genesis block theme, we have as much information as possible to set everyone up for success. Um, Carrie, and I know you've tested Genesis block theme. I'm not gonna talk to you about that, but uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe do you have any insights on that? Uh, no, it's just kind of an interesting experience experiment to, uh, when you say the block first build, to really try to ignore everything that's coming from the theme and try to get the result you want with blocks um, and then kind of working backwards from there. To, so yeah, I'd encourage people to, if they want to participate in it, to, to do it. Yeah. And I mean, really just to reemphasize this, like this is happening in WordPress core. This is what full site editing is bringing. And so our efforts here are really about trying to understand like, what should we be building? How should we be documenting things uh, to prepare folks to build in full site editing? Genesis framework, of course, will continue to be maintained and continue to be uh, updated as WordPress evolves. And of course, there'll be many, you know, multiple years before some people ever build a full site editing theme. Uh, but when that's available, we want, we want to be there with you. We want to be there for you and providing you the technology, the documentation, and access to these things that has never been available. I mean, Genesis sample uh, uh, being freely distributed, Genesis blocks being freely distributed, all of the capabilities I've described before are, are freely distributed now and um, will continue to be freely distributed in the future. Um, so we're really excited to be able to bring this kind of value to the Genesis community and the WordPress community as a whole. Um, and particularly around providing that bridge to full site editing um, as it becomes available in core. Well, this was super fun. Thanks, Carrie and uh, Lauren. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Of course. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm looking forward to speaking to you all again here in a couple of weeks in the next Genesis Shapers meeting. Um, if you'd like to learn more about what Carrie Dills is up to, you can visit carriedills.com, especially if you're trying to learn Genesis or WordPress. She's extremely good at that. And then if you'd like to see what Lauren's up to, visit restored316.com, uh, particularly if you're looking for feminine inspired themes. Uh, Lauren's themes are just beautiful, beautiful themes. Um, thanks everyone for listening to stay tuned for future episodes of the Genesis Community Livecast. Again, this has been your host, David Vogelpohl. I've a, been a proud member of the Genesis community for over eight years. I lead Genesis at WP Engine, and I love helping the Genesis community get better together with my friends from the shapers. Thank you. Thanks guys.